we could target tissue, but we can also target that tissue, but create a, a, an external environment around that tissue that is also going to super compensate it even more. Exactly. It's how you pick your inputs and then how the inputs are applied. You can drive different effects neurologically, endocrinologically, endocrine you know the word endocrinologically uh, aerobically anaerobically it's it's yeah. all about but load is load which is what right. i find is amazing especially to the body because i always say like the nervous system grows its meat it's like the you you know if you think about this from the beginning the nervous system comes online and it's like oh my god i can take in information and i have this brain thing to process it and then it's like okay so, but there's there's so much information coming in how do i funnel this information well the answer is to grow meat right yeah. So your ectoderm, it grows mesoderm, and then it's completely connected. It's like, your, your, it's like your, your meat is the cilia that your nervous system uses to learn about its environment. And then you have this endocrine system working in the background with your nervous system. But those two things are for the same purpose. It's for the goals of the, of the, of the brain, the central nervous system. And the meat is the meat, right? Yeah, and here's the paradox, right? Yes. The, the more you send a specific signal, the more that meat is going to become thicker and thicker and thicker, and you're really laying down that neural signal. But yeah. when we talk about like athletic diversity and overload, if we just lie down on this one pathway of nerve neural signaling, we're negating the development of all the other components. And, and that's the paradox that we're playing with. How much do I, do I really target and stress a particular adaptation <laughs> versus getting too chaotic that when, you know, on the other side of the fence, if you're just too chaotic, that the signal is too dilute, that you don't actually lay this meat down. So that's a real paradox, I think, in training that we're always playing with. How much, how much do we get specific and how long is that deadlift going to happen for versus yep. when do I change it and when is the appropriate time and what, what's the accommodation factor in part one to then make part two happen, you know? So yep, yep. I think that's an interesting component to try it's not it's not done it's not done well and and you can tell it's not done well because the overuse injuries are so predictable Mm -hmm. you know what i mean for for particular sports oh yeah 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 it's the same it's 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 hard to know like 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 there's no hard or fast answer as well your physiology my physiology that that same exposure is going to be completely different i always say this like you, you can have a team of 15 basketball players and give them the same workout it's going to be 15 different responses to the same workout yeah. So understanding that is the challenge that we're presented with, for sure.